Over on the left is Jim Davis. He is up a game currently, but right now things are tough. He's got two Ancestor Visions suspended, one on two, one on four. So a lot of cards to pay off, but he's getting facing down some, some heat from John. Two Silvergill Adepts are in play already, and there's a Graph Digger's Cage down. That means no Snapcaster Mage, no Nahiri. Yep. Uh, Silvergill of the Depth is the best card for Merfolk in this matchup because it replaces itself all the time. So Jim's removal spell is primarily going to be pointed at Lords as they come down. And then you clean up the Silver Gill Adept when you have a Sweeper. So he's going to take some damage in the interrupt. All right, we join. It's turn four with John on the play. So John makes his fourth land drop, which is Cavern of Souls. He casts Spreading Seas on a Steam Vents, goes to attack. Jim floats the red mana while he still has it, and Lightning Helix is away in Adept. But then he takes two, goes down to 15. Now Jim's in some trouble without any red mana on the table. And post-combat, John's going to play Master of the Pearl Trident, something that on the surface you'd say, why wouldn't you play your Lord pre-combat? But... John was actually rewarded for sequencing it this way. Yeah, I like that a lot. This way, Jim had to use a removal spell on the Adept. The Lord is worth so much more on the table. Jim draws a card off CM Vision, sees two more lands on top. And how good is that Spreading Seas? Right now, Jim's hand has two copies, two more copies, rather, of Lightning Helix in it. Yeah, uh, I believe he has a Path to Exile. He'll be able to use at least some removal on this turn, though he's going to fall behind if Toon is able to just produce a bunch more Merfolk. We go back. Jim at 15. Now, next turn, Jim gets to resolve the first of his two Ancestral Visions. And the choking point for Jim isn't going to be cards in hand. Card advantage is not an issue. It's going to be his mana. He has a lot of blue mana, which can't cast removal spells. He's very colored mana hungry in the colors of mana that he's shy on. Let's so look at Toon's hand. A pair of islands. A Marrow Regery is in hand. He'll cast Regery. That one with Cavern of Souls will not be countered. Does he have another one to add to the mix? So right now, the Silver Girl add up to 4-3. The Regery and Master of the Pearl Trident are 3-3s. Three so the attack is 7 as it stands. A lot of pressure on Jim to have Wrath of God on the following turn. A swing. Jim will attempt to path to exile away the Master of the Pearl Trident, and it works. Creature exiled. John will go ahead and get a basic. So now it's only three damage off the Silver Girl Adept. That much I think Jim can handle. Yeah. So see a basic island into play. And Jim kept a red source on top. I believe a Scalding Tarn is the land that's hanging out. So producing basic mountain on the following turn, maybe having a Snapcaster Mage for Lightning Helix, the following turn could be uh, solid for Jim. So other updates of Team Metagame Gurus. Kevin Jones winning his match. That likely puts him to join Peter Ingram in top eight. Nice. So we're at two. We're at two. Could be as many as four. Jim Davis and Andrew Jessup still playing. Plays that Harbinger of the Tides for tune. Now we go back to Jim. The Ancestral Visions resolves. He reloads. There's the Scalding Tarn he scried to the top of the deck. He's going to fetch with it and now bring back access to red mana. But it's costing him life points to do so. Gets a basic. Currently, there's no Lord that grants Island Walk. So Snapcaster Mage Lightning Helix would potentially be a solid turn for Jim coming up here. All right, the match of the Pearl Trident's gone. Right, and Marrow Regery has some... Cool abilities, but another, none of them are your other merfolk could get Island Walk. Yeah, it could tap the blocker, but my guess is that Jim will go ahead and just helix away that Regery. Yeah. You see Jim actually with a Spreading Seas of his own in his hand. I kind of rather like that against the merfolk deck. Yeah, it could hit a Muta Vault. In this yeah. circumstance, it's hitting Cavern of Souls. Yeah, say, say how much you like that, a merfolk player. You know, your stuff, your cards are islands. <laughs> Leaves up just enough mana for Lightning Helix. Jim's hand, two Helixes, two Nahiris. He'll Helix away the Marrow Regery. It goes for it while Toon is tapped down. There could be a Dispel, which would be pretty disastrous for Jim here. So the card Lightning Helix, hasn't. we haven't seen too much play with it in Modern, I'd say, in the last couple years. But one thing is when I watch this Jeskai Control deck, I, I forget just how good this card is. So Jim's doing the All Creek Kill Spell plan, and you notice that just... 
he's not really losing life points as he's removing creatures, because every time he casts one of these helixes, he goes up by three again. Yeah, uh, he's taken some uh, hits to the chin, but uh, he's recovering just fine. John untaps, swings for four, putting Jim back down to ten, but no follow-up play from Toon. Well, really solid draw for Jim here. Engineered Explosives was the pickup. That's great. John's board is set. Both his creatures are set on two. And Spreading Seas. Spreading Seas on two. It would, it would destroy Jim's on Cavern of Souls, but freeing up that red mana is potentially huge. Engineer Explosives set to two for Jim. He has another Ancestral Visions coming off Suspend next turn. He'll play a fetch land. His hand right now, Nahiri, Nahiri, Path to Exile. Wow, and Lightning Helix. Once this explosive goes off, it won't take long for Jim to just be in the firmly in the driver's seat of this game. John will go to attacks. Jim will crack the engineer explosive. So both spreading seas hit the graveyard. Jim gets his steam vents back. John gets his cavern of souls back. No damage on the attack as all the creatures are swept up. The board is clean. Jim is about to draw three more extra cards. And here is Master of the Pearl Trident from John, uncounterable thanks to the cavern he's gotten back. Yep, but unfortunately for John, Jim's answers are not counter spells. He's still full up on removal. Yeah. He'll fetch for Sacred Founder, and you see Jim picking up the pace. He knows he's closing in on the top eight. Upkeep, he's going to draw three up Ancestral Visions. That's the second one he's resolved this game. Suspended them on turns one and three. Draws Wrath of God, Lightning Bolt, Second Path to Exile. This is this is going to be too much. He's got two Bolt, Bolt, Helix, Path, Path, Nahiri. This is too much removal for John to get through. Yeah, it's just an embarrassment of riches for Jim. Lightning Bolt's the way the Merfolk. It hits the graveyard. John back to zero creatures. Jim now is going to go for Nahiri. Confident at nine life. She's going to plus up to six. We'll see if he even chooses to discard. It looks like the second. Second Nahiri, yeah. yeah. Second Nahiri gone. He'll look for that land drop. Doesn't find it, but he finds another removal spell. It's Lightning Bolt. Oh, I guess that one will do. <laughs> John untaps. It's got a full grip of cards, but it looks like they are all lands. Whole bunch of nothing hanging out in Toon's hand. All right, well, he drew a Master of the Pearl Trident. Jim with about seven ways to kill it in hand. One for each card. Legacy Classic players, that is time in the round. Active player finishes. Nahiri turn. up to Five eight. Turns. Jim will discard the island. Draws a colonnade. Plays it, and Nahiri's gonna make Nemer cool next turn. And Jim more than enough ways to protect her. Theoretically, Toon could have a Harbinger of the Tides to stop the Emmercruel from just killing him. Because the ability of a permanent, not a spell, but uh, he's still in very bad shape even if he has that. He has to get annihilated for six for the Emmercruel to be tapped. Hey, what do you think about this stuff? Like, John attacks with Master of the Pearl Trident at Jim. Uh, Jim takes it. Goes to seven. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Just <laughs> <laughs> sure. I have I, seven more. I would just look my opponent straight in the face and be like, if only I had a kill spell. <laughs> <laughs> No, these are all lands. It's just, it's just the worst. That's why I bitched to land in Nahiri. I'm just I'm looking for some action. <laughs> Nahiri, not going to summon Emmercool just yet. She's going to go ahead and exile the Master of the Pearl Trident as it was tapped. Jim passes. So Jim picked up a Vanillion click. I guess the entire idea he wants to make sure that Toon's got nothing going on that can stop him from ending this game. During draw step, Jim clicks. It is Aether Vial, three lands. No, Jim's going to let him keep those. Yeah. So in another win and in between Andrew Jessup and Aaron Barich. Two good players there. That's an infect mirror between the two. In three, it is Andrew Jessup who ends up on top. He's at 36 points. The third member of Team Metagame Gurus to get a spot in the top eight. Wow. Dare I say that four of them might make the top eight here? Yeah, I think I've heard that somewhere before, actually. Snapcaster Mage for Jim. Cleans the board. Activates Colonnade. Swings with Creatures. It's a swing of nine. John will go to 11. 
And Jim closing this one out, one attack at a time. Looks like two more turns until he has it, or even one with all the burn he still has. Or that eight loyalty Nahiri. And John knows it, extends the hand, and Jim Davis will be joining his teammates in the top eight, all of them at 12 and two. Pete Ingram, Andrew Jessup, Jim Davis, and Kevin Jones, four for four in the top eight. 